Welcome to the Week in Italian Startup, where we discuss the latest highlights happening in the Italian tech and investment ecosystem. Let's start with the biggest round of last week. Aquis, fitness tech startup raising 1.15 million from Alicrowd3 from Azimut, WeMove and X Equity, which is a club deal structure. Uh, so uh, the week has been like a little bit uh, slow, I would say, as uh, we were commenting before. Um, and this is like uh, one of the big uh, rounds. What is interesting is that, uh, um, so these guys have been uh, trying to actually disrupt uh, fitness. Um, there, there, there have been attempts actually like uh, in different uh, geographies to actually make something uh, close uh, to what the guys are doing. So essentially what they're building is um, uh, a multifunction smart station, which basically incorporates, uh, um, well, they claim an entire gym's equipment in a single machine. And the idea is to give like uh, access to a full body workout without necessarily going through the different machinery that the gym might offer. So this is, it's an interesting um, mission. But, uh, but yeah, uh, people have tried to actually do that in different forms. Uh, there is, there is still some interest, uh, here for, for this, apparently from an investor standpoint, what is also interesting is the angle that they're taking. So they're basically also trying to involve a physiotherapist into this, which is, uh, something that, um, I don't think I've seen before, but it's interesting in the sense that, um, including the medical side and the treatment side, that can be like a, one of the key tools to actually unlock this kind of a, a product. What's your take, Nick, on this? Well, wow. Well, it sort of, you know, makes sense. Uh, I think that after Peloton uh, selling uh, a purely consumer kind of home tool for, for, uh, for fitness, you know, Something has changed in the market in a, in a, in a sense. No, I don't want to show something, you know, the, the good and the bad. So I think that it is a, it's a decision to, to, to look for different positioning and to try to find balance that can somehow either distribute or position the, 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 the tool on the market. And I think this is partnership. I mean, it makes sense. It sounds. It sounds. It sounds about right. Uh, it is still an early stage startup, so we we we'll see we we'll see how it works. Um, and I guess that hardware startups tend to have some, you know, something different than pure software startups. So we take for me to see how it goes moving forward. Um, about the round, it's a. Uh, it was actually the only round in the week. It was um, a crowdfunding round. So, um, so there is a lot of crowd and led by the Eric crowd three investment paper. It was, as you know, uh, raised on the, on the, on the same path for the path of a, I think this is a kind of an interesting thing to remember, uh, as it would uh, launch the three different, uh, Eric crowd funds raising between 25 and 34 million euros each on crowdfunding uh, and deploying the, the fund on the crowdfunding platform. So it's the, the, the interesting indexes of the of crowdfunding startups in, the, in it. Yeah, I mean, Ali, what is interesting of Ali Crowd is that it's probably one of the most successful um like um early stage uh, crowdfunding like uh, mission so it was very successful it is very successful and it's still like working pretty pretty good so definitely kudos to them definitely the things is moving and uh, you know uh, i'm not a big fan of of, of crowdfunding as, as you know but uh, there are exceptions to that and um, definitely they've been moving extremely quick and extremely effectively i agree with you and i have another consideration to make uh they are the most successful some of the most successful campaigns were made raising capital for fun, often investing in kind of other startups. So is the index strategy, uh, is it the best strategy also in crowdfunding and not just in, in stock picking? So the, the lazy investor, uh, it's much, for the lazy investor, it, it is much easier to, 
invest in the index than to pick the, the single the single stocks. This is interesting, point. right? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And in, I'm very excited to see what's going to happen like five years, 10 years from now. Like what's going to, what are the returns? Is the thing going to disappear completely and be completely like buried under the sand? Or actually we will uh, witness some very, very interesting deals. So we'll see. We'll see. It's uh, definitely interesting to see. All right. Uh, moving forward, great news from the Italian government, actually. So uh, the PNRR, which is basically the program that uh, Italy has been promoting uh, over the years to actually um, help uh, the development of the country, digital transformation and all of that, is allocating another 150 million to support investment in AI, 5G and cybersecurity. So awesome news. Two extra consideration. So basically... Uh, these funds have been assigned for, uh, to the Department of Transformazione Digitale, Digital Transformation, and basically the Agency for Cybersecurity. So this is a co-managed sort of uh, funding. And the idea is to um, essentially provide capital to VC funds. So my understanding is uh, CDP managed funds. I don't know if uh, if you caught that or if, if I'm mistaken, but uh, the idea is basically to bulk up on the CDP side and to actually push these kind of verticals. Great news for funds, great news for CDP, and of course it's gonna trickle down to companies. Yeah, I, I got the same impression from the wording of the article um, that the, the funds are paying that um, investing in funds managed by CDP and not third party funds. Um, it's a bit of a new convoluted kind of convoluted um, setup where the decision maker seems to be the National Cybersecurity Agency. But as far as I know, it's not a non capital locator, but still, uh, they will be the ones deciding or managing the, the, the capital. The other thing that I didn't clearly understand is whether that capital can be also invested directly into startups or, or, or just into, um, into other funds. So it's a bit foggy in a sense. I don't yeah, know whether you um, agree. Mm. And there is this awesome. expectation that, 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 that the late capital will somehow leverage like 800 million euros across the market yeah yeah i wonder i wonder where they come from so i mean that <laughs> <laughs> is being basically aggregated under the uh, public only as a knowledge so we see awesome Right, moving on. Uh, H Farm receiving a tender offer to be taken private. So H Farm has been one of the lead uh, venture builder uh, back uh, one of the f actually you know most famous and uh, one of the first actually like completely structured venture builder in Italy. Uh, it got a lot of press when it was launched a few years back. Uh, it was taken public on the Euronext growth in Milan. And uh, now, basically, they are approving a delisting of the company. So basically, just to give the, the listener a few numbers, the, uh, basically, they had like a negative EBITDA last year. So it was a negative closing. Um, the year before, I believe they managed to sold them uh, three companies in the portfolio and kind of also ranking up a little bit uh, of cash. So there was a very, very positive return. So. As of today, the market cap of the company is about 23 million. And the idea is essentially to delist uh, the company through, um, through uh, OPA Totalitaria, which is a mechanism that, uh, that it's used in Italy to do so. And on top of that, they're approving an equity increase of 7.9 million, basically to um, expand the operation, but especially so it feels more like a pivot at this point because, uh, okay, they've been working on, educa on the educational side for the last years, um, even though they started more on the acceleration side. So they're really, it's a transition moment for them. And uh, probably this, the listing and this capital is probably functional. Well, it is for sure functional to this new strategy. So uh, not an easy path, but definitely worth, worth exploring for the growth of the company. Mm. 
Yeah, agree agree with you. Uh H five has a long story in the Italian sort of system and they were they were one of the main actors setting up the start of Act back in twenty twenty twelve. They had a great influence on basically building the uh the underlying uh, infrastructure of what she is today in the Italian market. Uh, in the good and the bad. Then they had some, you know, troubles. Uh, bumpy, but so they had bumpy roads uh, in, the, in, the, in the path going forward. They, as you said, they pivoted a lot on, on education, invested a lot on education. So then uh, today, so uh, we have this, uh, this kind of offer going forward. That I agree with you, it's for a, a move to be more nimble uh, to be able to move faster and easier way. And the market is rapidly changing. Uh, I think, the, in a sense, Jack, I don't know whether he agree with me. Uh, in the last couple of years, we've seen the first wave of um, uh, historical companies, historical accelerators that, you know, made the, the, the entire life cycle from starting the ecosystem to growing the ecosystem and to get it to maturity, listing and going public, uh, and then now trying to find a new, uh, a new path going forward. H Farm is the latest example, but speaking about digital magic and, and that venture, the, 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 you know, this process of merging together and driving forces. Um, in, in a sense, it's, you know, some, some, some type of, um, Coming of age on, on that wave of, Good point. Uh, of operators in the VC ecosystem. Yeah, good point. And um, I, I want to push it even further and be a little bit more uh, spicy on that. It feels uh, like, a, like a lab. So it feels like these are the sort of it's, the ecosystem is small, the, the Aeronext is not big at all. Uh, they've been trying to simplify the IPO. It's like a laboratory in a way, just to understand better, like how the dynamic and works and uh, what works and what doesn't in this specific ecosystem. Because, um, you know, um, it's it's very tough to actually understand what what is the, the sweet spot for actually companies to go public. Um, US, of course, has a bigger history with different like requirements, different sort of compliance. And everything Italy is, is kind of on a learning curve. Many, many different variables are at play, but uh, but it feels like there are experiments, and you know some experiments are working, some not. Some they 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 harbor the storm better. Some they need to get taken back. And for each farm, yeah, it looks like um, you know being private is the right path, especially for this this pivot moment. So maybe that's the way that's the way to do it. So maybe uh, I don't want to say. You know, something like, you know, when is the right time for, for listing, whether they were too early or whatnot. It's very, it's a very tough judgment call, to be honest with you. But uh, definitely, it's, uh, it's, uh, there, th these are the questions to ask, just to understand better how the IPO market works. And uh, yeah, I mean, maybe we're better at private capital instead of uh, sort of uh, public listing capital at this stage. Uh, I mean, Italy is a weird beast uh, at this point, I mean, it seems like, right? Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not an expert at all in the public markets in Italy, unfortunately. But still, yes, the impression is... They are not yet the best place to be for specific type of companies. Uh, even though in the last few weeks, uh, there was a... Um, and know an updated law and, and you know I don't demand the details that made it easier uh, to list and manage a public company you know next growth there was a series in the last few weeks so that everybody knows that it's a bit um complex uh, to go public and to handle a public company and that you know that there are there are actions that are being taken forward in order to ease at least all the infrastructure you need to have around the public company. But then you're right. The, 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 the real question to ask is when, which company, how, whether it makes sense 
to, to, to the public. Yeah, I mean, in the spirit of the, the Euronext is really to sim simplify the going public process. And uh, again, if you really want to be a little bit uh, spicy again, uh, the question is, is it the right path to actually make uh, an easier path to IPO? Is that, is that the right way to do it? Because it, it, it has a bunch of complications for sure. So these are open well, questions. Well, I, I, so I hope the answer is yes, because otherwise we would have a, an additional problem, at least on, on my side of on the table. I mean, the entire, the entire market, in, let's say startup and VC market is, you know, private capital market, let's, let's say that, is built around getting eventually to liquidity and everybody has this expectation that the public markets are the final provider of liquidity. No liquidity, no private capital markets. Because, I mean, you can pump money at the beginning as much as you want, but at the end, money must come out on the other end eventually. If it doesn't, uh, we've got a huge problem. A huge problem. So I really hope that <laughs> the answer is yes, public markets are a viable way for the right companies to, to, to raise capital to further, to further um, push up on growth, but also to give it back to, to, to investors and actually to sustain those companies out here in, 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 in riskier situations. I really do hope that's the answer, but I like it. Currently, I like it. Currently, maybe it is not yet the answer. I mean, yeah, we have, we have awesome. a history of Italian companies or dual companies listing outside of Italy, even in the tech sector. I mean, Seiko listed uh, in Italy, but um, Moto K didn't. They, they, they still chose the year next, but not in Italy. Interesting we, we consideration. Could, we, could, we could probably, you know, start a, a specific edition of of of, of just around this, this specific question. Indeed. Mm. All right. Um, to to end the discussion for today, let's talk about the incredible amount of uh, research and reports on 2023. Uh, from different Italian uh, uh, institutions and funds. So uh, you mentioned a couple. So let's start from the, the historic one, which I agree with you, the VEM, uh, which, is, uh, which has been around for since 2009, right? That's, uh, that's, that's impressive. Since, since and, um, yes. Yeah, I mean, and impressively enough, they built an index around it using 2009 as, um, as the reference here. And then basically there is a very interesting graph um, tracking the VC market as an index. So that was a particularly uh, interesting to, to watch. Uh, very valuable data um, in very su like summarized in a few pages. And this is absolutely a great, um, great tool. So people that haven't read it, I encourage to, to take a look. Uh, the second one is the report uh, basically published by uh, P101 together with the uh, deal room. Uh, that's a mo way more substantial uh, endeavor. Uh, there is a lot, a lot of interesting like data points, uh, kind of converging. Uh, I don't know if um, I mean I'm sure there are like a lot of insights over there. I haven't had the chance to go through the whole thing yet, but uh, but definitely I encourage the listener to, to take a look and see what's uh, what's up. It's a great, great tool and a very valuable resource. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely green. All right. Perfect. So that concludes this week's episode. Uh, Nick, thank you so much for joining and for the listener. I'll see you next week. Ciao, Jack. Thank you so much. Take care and ciao, everybody. See you in a week.